Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged, coming from the home of Delta Motorsports, right next to the Silverstone Motor Racing Circuit. Delta build really cool cars, and now they've started building these. They are producing five electric cars, supported by the Technology Strategy Board, as part of a government initiative to develop ultra-low energy vehicles. These cars not only use the latest technology in batteries, battery management and electric motors, they are also made to go the furthest distance with the least amount of energy used. Much less energy than a conventional car that has had the internal combustion engine taken out and replaced with electric motors and batteries. The bodywork and structure of the chassis are all made from carbon fibre. The cars are designed to be as light and aerodynamic as possible. This really is cutting-edge technology, and as I've come to expect, there's not some oily mechanic with a fistful of spanners working on the cars, but computer experts with laptops. Everywhere you look, there's laptops. The team ran through the final checks. The car is still not quite finished, and it's going through a barrage of tests and adjustments. But finally, it was ready, and we set off. A seatbelt. Oh, there's one get oh, oh, there it is. I've got yeah, it. Just down by your side. Right. This is extremely... How many people have been in these? In this car? In so this car? Very oh, few. Very few indeed, yeah. I feel very special. Six or seven. <laughs> this is the first running... Is it, has it got an actual name, though, this particular the car? E4 Coupe. The E4 Coupe. And you're going to start it. I'm going to start it up. And I'm just hoping... The, the contact is closed. Okay. Yeah. Tick, tick. Nice. Number there. Fantastic screen. It's not finished yet, so you're not going to be able to see this yet, but there is a fantastic display that's coming up telling us what's so going on. Touch screen interface with speed and state of charge, but also... Oh, <laughs> and also, <laughs> your phone will ring automatically. The next step is to go to the drive position. Right. You hear the, uh, we've got a, an electric um, vacuum pump. Right. And the brake booster, of course, because there's no vacuum, because right. there's no engine. There's no engine, yes. So everything is now electric. Right. So I have to press the brake pedal to be able to select a gear, as you would do in a normal yeah. automatic. Pop it into reverse. And that's a gear, it's just a button. It's gone green, yeah. and that's, that's it. We're right. in, uh, we are now And that's a mechanical handbrake. A mechanical handbrake. Very lovely, friend. lovely bit well, of mechanics the, uh, there. The electrical ones are big, heavy and expensive, right. so a lot simpler to go that way. Let's roll that's it down right. the hill. The other thing I want to quickly mention is that the electric motors that drive this vehicle are made just down the road in Oxford. They are, yes. They're not imported yes. from Taiwan or That's China or... Correct, uh, yeah. A uh, spin-out company from Oxford University. Right. Uh, it's now building, developing, selling... This is completely... Yeah, no, no, don't, that would be very bad. And I don't want to be the first person to experience you doing that either. So we're only driving now on the kind of, uh, like this, the, just the access, the access road. roads around Silverstone Racing Circuit, so we're not going out on the public road. It doesn't have a number plate, for one thing. No. So, so it's a firm, it's a, I'm explaining, it's quite a firm ride. I mean, it's very like a sports yeah. car ride, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, it's having no trouble moving. And this is a third, oh, what a nice, a third talk. So this is only, this is only got a third of its power that it's being that it's using at the moment. Well, the other thing is that you've designed it to be able to have it as a four-wheel drive vehicle. Yeah, yes, this so, is just two wheel So this is only two-wheel drive with only two motors driving the two rear wheels. Exactly. In theory, a sixth of the torque that it could have. Yes. And which is scary, because this is great. not a sloppy drive at the moment. We're not kind of dawdling along milk float style. No, this is quite brusque, I would think, is a good description of it. One of the guys said it feels just like his 1.4 litre engine petrol car, right. as it is now. This is really nice. It must be such a thrill for you after it what is. you've been through yeah, to get to this point. To warn the guy on. Just zipping around to the stow circuit. Didn't look convinced, did he? No. Nah. Never mind. But he's pressing the green button, button, that's what matters. Pull the barrier up. So there's quite a bit of chung when you first start moving, isn't there? There is initially, yeah, that's it's one of those things that once we've got it... Uh, so, that's that, uh, so that's down to battery, the, the, the power management, it's basically that's all down to, to software, isn't it? Software, it's software, weird, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. In the olden days it used to be a mechanical issue, but it's now very much software. Yeah. I did actually record a, an episode of Carpool with Nick, uh, it, one of the early ones, <laughs> Yeah. on Silverstone Circuit, in a Prius, drifting in a Prius, and 
it got it quite sideways, didn't it? It did get it a bit sideways, and it uh, I didn't have any batteries charged. It is a tragic, it's one of the few, out of a hundred episodes, Yeah. It was, it was one of three that were a disaster. So I'm very ashamed of that. So it's great to be able to come in. And we were talking about this car then, which at that stage yeah. was literally a drawing, I think, by the, by the yeah. you know, there wasn't yeah. any bits of it. So it's been a, it's been a long, hard struggle for you. And I'm mean, thinking, it's absolutely phenomenal. This is, I cannot believe that we're going along in this car that is running at a third of its power. It's actually quite scary. We are just definitely shifting. <laughs> that is amazing. It's amazing. You should be so thrilled with it. Now there's a quick question then, because I'm just trying to judge from my now slightly less limited experience of electric vehicles. Are, are you using regenerative braking from the motors uh, at the moment? Right now we're not. You're not, the but you can do. It. There you can do it, right? Exactly. Um, in the early stages, we'll only have a just a simple strategy where, if you lift off the throttle, it'll give you a level of, of regen. Right. Um, so nothing on the brake pedal at the right. moment. Uh, something to be implemented at some point in the future. Yeah. What a fantastic facility to have. You know, for a company your size, yeah. which is not exactly huge, to have a test, effectively a road that you can go on. I mean, that's that. But I mean, if you were in a garage out the back oh, of no, Slough or somewhere, you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to drive it anywhere, would yeah, you? Yeah, around right. industrial estate. We've yeah. actually got a little bit of time booked on the circuit tomorrow, actually yeah. on the South Circuit, right? Just to get a few more miles on it, yeah, at slightly higher speed because obviously we're limited as to what we can do, yeah, uh, around the track, understandably. So there's been other manufacturers then have been looking at what you've done with this and yeah. been having a... Yes, a lots of interest. Um, couldn't possibly tell you who. No, of course. No, um, I wouldn't dream of asking. Yeah, a, a number of uh, yeah, volume manufacturers looking particularly at the moment at the, uh, the lightweight composite structures right. Right, that we've done. Because uh, that we should explain, the, the body of the car is... I mean, all the body work you see is carbon fibre, is that right? It, it is, but the even more important, the, the structure underneath the surface of the chassis, the, right. the, the guts of the car, if you like, is uh, is also carbon is composite. It? Right. So that's, yeah, that's and that's, where that's quite, it. so quite a lot of cars will, particularly high-end cars, will use carbon fibre in the bodywork, yeah. but not, but then the chassis is either steel or yeah. aluminium, whatever. So, you're, exactly. so effectively, the structure of the car is, is it's carbon, carbon fibre. Composite. Ah. Yeah. yeah. A good wine. I think I'm now developing an ear for a yeah. drivetrain. You know, it's, I've been so not entirely silent. Sort of, no, no. Quite direct drive, of course. So there yeah. is which I really like. That there is between the, yes. the motors and the wheels. Yeah, yeah. Which again helps us from an efficiency perspective as well as uh, reducing the noise. Yes, it just makes sense because there's less, there's less friction for, it, yeah. for the motors to go through. I mean, it's literally a motor, a drive shaft, a wheel. There is nothing yeah. in between it. Yeah. There's no gearing whatsoever. I think also, I think the thing I want to say is that you, your experience in motor racing, drive train, you know, the kind of handling of this car, the steering, the, it feels so tight. You know, it grips the road. It doesn't feel like a, a street car. It feels like a racing car. But it's a, and I mean, you've built all that effectively yeah. from scratch. The steering assembly, the you know, all that yeah, stuff. Absolutely, you drive all, all design from scratch. Yeah. 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 And having that experience, you know, in that field, in the field of high yeah. performance cars, it really, you can really sense it straight away. It's really, really impressive. And it's all those things that you know, the, the, the amount of feedback you'd be getting if this was a powerful petrol engine. You'd be getting all that noise, the vibration. Yes, exactly. you, you, you know, as you experience driving, you then learn how to judge that and judge your. Where's this? You're going. Yeah. It's yeah. going along. It's going pretty quick. Yeah. What's, not quite sure what's happening. So you've made five altogether. Yeah. Yeah. The fifth one is uh, not quite there yet, but right. the, the other four are getting pretty close. They're all now. pretty close. Yeah. And then they. And then will you then use those as sort of demonstration vehicles <clears> and exactly. take them around? And yeah. They'll be on the road, driving them around as part of the. Technology Strategy Board right. demonstrator program for the next 12 months, and then beyond that, we'll see. Yeah, um, it just depends really what sort of interest we get from potential customers. Yes, but yeah. certainly mainstream vehicle manufacturers or others. And I mean, they're, they're, the things that I, people always want to know is how long, how long batteries take to blah blah blah. But actually, that's kind of irrelevant because that's not really why you have built this. I mean, I mean, do you know, have you got a clue of what sort of range you can get out of it? Yeah. At all? I mean, this this one, as it is at the moment, it's got a smaller battery pack in than we could put in. But even then, we're looking at about 120 miles range. Right. So you're going so over 100 miles. Over I mean, that's miles, right. Yeah. yeah. Which is very very encouraging. 
That is fantastic. 